Yo guys and welcome back to another video. So in this one we'll be doing a complete walkthrough of the iGCSC Edexcel and this is paper 1F of the June 2021 series. Yeah. Now this one's heavily requested and just like every other one it's just the same old story. We'll go through each question top to bottom and do a complete walkthrough and just break it down until you guys fully understand how to do it. And if there's any parts of the you know video where you guys find hard you know just pause it have a go and just just let me know how it goes. My personal recommendation, guys, is to always try the question first here and see how it goes. If it goes well for you, then good. Keep going. Otherwise, let's just go straight into it. Now, as always, you're given some formulas. It's important to know some of these formulas like every trapezium and how to do it. And if you're not sure, I mean, we're going to go through it anyway, so don't worry about it, yeah? So, number one. Let's just go straight to number one. Okay? So, answer all 25 questions. Cool, 25. Then we're going to try and do as many as we can in this video. So, one. So from the numbers in the box, write down a a factor of 40. So to find a factor of 40, it's just the way I look at it, it's just two numbers are multiplied to make 40. That's the easy way to do it. And I can think of 8 times 5. So 8 would be one of them. Now B, a multiple of 7. So something in the 7 times table. So like 7, 14, 21 onwards. Eventually you'll find that 35 is in the 7 times table because 7 times 5 is 35. So let's write the answers here. So you've got 8 here. And 35 here. Cool. Next one, a prime number. So any numbers that basically you, you can only divide by itself and one. So for example, to get three, you can only make it by doing three times one and nothing else. So a prime number here, let's check out. Eight is not a prime number because it's two times four. Nine is three times three, nope. Seventeen can only be made by seventeen times one. So that's a prime number. Next one, a square number. So square numbers are like 2 times 2, 3 times 3, and so on. Well, 9 is the same as, um, let's have a look, 3 times 3, that's a square number, because 3 times 3 is 9. Any other square numbers here? Nope, so the only square number is 9. And next one, the two numbers with a difference of 31. So the trick is, just find a number and add 31 to it. So, A, if you add 31 to it, would you get any numbers here? Nope. And remember guys, you've got a calculator, yeah? so use your calculator. So add 31 to each of these numbers. The only number that would actually work is 17. Because 17 add 31 will give us 48. And that's it. So it would be 17 and 38. Cool. Let's write down here. So 17 and 48. Nice. Alright, number 2. So the diagram shows part of a number line. Cool. So you've got 12, and then it seems to be going up in some numbers. It helps to see how, how many it goes up by. If you're not sure, just count how many lines there are. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. So then you divide it, so you realize it goes up in 5 parts. So what I would do, you just find the difference. The difference between 12 and 13 is 1, and then 1 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.2. So this means it's all going up in 0.2s. So this number here, which is part A, write the number this marked. It's going up in 0.2, so this would have to be 12.2, 12.4, and then 12.6. Cool. The diagram below shows a parcel on weighing scales. Again, this is like another similar thing. The parcel weighs less than 6 kilograms. How many kilograms less? So let's work out what this number is firstly. Yeah? So we know that this line is 4 and this line is 5. Let's do the same trick. So if we're going to count across, how many lines are there? So you've got 1. 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, it's going up in 5 parts, so just like the first question, it's going up in 0 0.2s. So if we add it up, we've got 4.2, 4.4, 4.6. So this is 4.6 kg. So on your calculator, just do 6, take away 4.6, and you should get 1.4 kg. Next one. Change 7.6 meters into centimeters. Well, to go from meters to centimeters, you just times it by 100. So in your calculator, you just do 7.6 times 100, you should get 760. Change 91,600 milliliters into liters. Well, we know there is a thousand milliliters into, in one liter, so just divide this by a thousand in your calculator. So you're, you're writing 91,600 divided by 1,000, and you should get 91.6 liters. Cool. Now, Ivan, or Ivan, depending on your country, goes to the gym at 7.15 p.m. Write this time using 24 o'clock. Nice trick. If you've got PM, just add 12 to this number 7. So 7 plus 12 is 19. So it'd be 19, 15. So that's our time. 
It's important to know your 24 hour close, guys. It's just generally very important. Okay, find the number that's exactly halfway between these two numbers. Trick, just add these two numbers up. So 3.7 add 6.1. And in your calculator, when you add them up, divide it by 2. So let's do it. So add them both up. 3.7 add 6.1 will give us exactly 9.8. And if you half it, you should get the answer of exactly 4.9. And that's the number that is halfway. Cool. Number 4. Simplify 3 times 10D. Well, 3 times 10 is 30, so it's going to be 30D. Next one. Simplify 8E plus C minus 5E. So just imagine this E is just 1E, yeah? So you're just going to do in your calculator 8 plus 1 minus 5. And if you do that, 8 plus 1 minus 5 will give us 4, so it'll be 4Es. Okay? Solve. So solve means you want to find the value of uh, that letter G. So you're going to make G the subject. So to do that, it says 6G equals 42. So you're going to move that 6 across the equal sign. Because it's 6 times G, the opposite times thing is dividing. So it'd be G equals 42 over 6. So in your calculator, 42 divided by 6 gives us 7. So G equals 7. Next one, solve again. Solve 24 equals 10 plus H. Well, 10 plus something must give us 24. So we could just do in our calculator, 24 minus 10. That should give us a H value of 14. Yeah, so that's our algebra problems all done. Now, number five. Write these numbers in orders of size. Let's start with the smallest. So the smallest number here. So let's just take our time and investigate here. Yeah? So what I do, I usually like to look at the first digit. So the first digit is two, meaning they're all the same. So then we look at the next digit. So we look at the zero, the, the first decimal place. Well, zero is here, so next one is one. So that means the first one's smaller. The second one looks the same like the first. So now we're going to compare these two here. Yeah? So which one looks smaller? Well, we look at the next digit after. This is an 8 and this is a 0. So therefore, this one is smaller. So that goes first. And then we cross it out. And therefore, this is second. And cross it out. Now, next one we look at the 1s here. Yeah? So 2.1s. So we got this one and that one. Then we look at the next digit, which is a 3. And this is a 1. So this because it's a 1, this is automatically smaller. So it'd be 2.111. And next one would be 2.13. And lastly, it would be 2.7, which is the biggest. Nice. Now part B. Let's write this number correct to two decimal places. Nice trick here. Just underline basically the first two decimal places and then look at the third number. You always look at the number after the number decimal places. Because that's a 9, it means you're gonna round up 83 to 84, so it'd be 5.84. So you just always add one more unit, basically. Yeah? Now, part C. Write 0.73 as a fraction. Easy. Because you have a calculator, you could literally just write 0.73. That's if it's scientific. If you do that, it would just be 73 over 100. D. Write down the value of the 6 in the number 0 0.067. So this is, so if we look at this one, the first 0 is the tenths, this is the hundredths. So the value of this one is just basically six hundredths. So we can say either six hundredths or 0 0.06. That's the value of it, yeah? I'll, I'll, I'll always write both, just to make it clear, yeah? Now E, write 17% as a decimal. So again, just in your calculator, when you, when you see the word percent, it means per hundred. So it means 17 over 100. Put it in a calculator, you get 0 0.17. Now, 70% of a number is 252. Work out the number. So he wants to find 70% of a number. So it just means 70% of something gives us 252. A nice trick is to just rearrange it, is to just divide 70% across. Remember, 70%, just like the other question, is the same as 0 0.70 or 0 0.7. So in your calculator, we're just going to write the box equals 252 over 0 0.7 or 70. And if you do that, if you divide them, you should get an answer of, and let's just double check in our calculator, 360. So the original number was 360. And if you want to double check this, guys, just write 0 0.7, so 70%, which is, or you can do like other questions, 0 0.70 times 360, and you should get 252. So it checks out. Nice. And that's all we have seven marks here. Alright, so let's move on to number six. 
Now, Janine has two liters of orange squash. She also has some empty cups. Now, when full, each cup holds 300 milliliters of orange squash. So always keep this information, yes? Yeah? So 200 liters, that's basically 2,000 milliliters, yeah? So just keep that in mind. And each cup holds 300 ml. So that is also important to keep in mind. Janine fills as many cups as possible. How much orange squash does Janine have left after filling as many cups as possible? Okay, so it's just a question of how many times does 300 go into 2,000? Well, we can do some division, isn't it? So it's just basically 2,000 divided by 300. And if you do that, 2,000 divided by 300, let's put in our calculator. You should get exactly, it'll say in decimal places, 6.6666, dot, dot, dot. It's important to write this in decimal rather than a fraction because you want to see how many is left over. Now, this means that you can fill exactly six cups and then you get some random decimal. So the way to check it over, just do six times 300. That tells you how many is actually been filled, which is 1,800 mil. And you can clearly see that the difference between 2,000 and 1,800 is literally 200 mil. So you're left with, how much squash does she have left over? Well, she has 200 milliliters left. Nice. Okay, number seven. So diagram shows a rectangle and a square. Okay, so you've got one side of the square, one side of the rectangle is six, and the other one's ten. The perimeter of the rectangle is equal to the perimeter of the square. Now let's let's understand what that means. The so perimeter means the length when you add around. So if you know that this side is ten, this side is six, that means this side is ten centimeters and this side is six. Perimeter means when you add them all up, it's the same. So let's go ahead and add this up, guys. So you've got ten and six is sixteen. Add another 16 is 32, so all of this is 32 centimeters. Okay, now that means, and for a square, we need to know that the square has the same length all the way around. Because you've got four sides, let's do 32 divided by 4. That'll give us 8 centimeters. You've got 8, 8, 8, and 8. Yeah, so that's basically the same. Now let's keep reading. It says that the area of the rectangle is less than the area of the square. Work out how much the area of the rectangle is less than the area of the square. Well, to find the area of a shape, you just times two sides. So the area of the first shape is 6 times 10, which is 60 centimeters squared. And well, 8 times 8 is 64, so 64 centimeters squared. So we can see that the difference between 60 and 64 is 4 centimeters squared. And that is the difference. Ooh. Wow, 4 marks for that. That's a lot. Some students leaving a language school one day were each asked which language lesson they had just attended. The table and the pie chart give some information about their answers. Okay, so for example, so for Italian, when 24 students left, that, that was basically represented as 30 degrees. Whereas for French and the others, we, we don't know because we need to fill out. So before we do anything, let's fill out this um, table because I know the question is going to ask that. So the easy way to fill out is to use the very first set of results, yeah? So what we can do, we just divide the numbers. So you just do 30 divided by 24. So 30 over 24, just as a first example, gives us 1.25. That means all you have to do, if you want to go from frequency to angle, you times by 1.25. If you want to go from angle to frequency, you divide it. Okay, so let's go for the, let's do the French. Let's do 95 degrees divided by the ray. So if you do that, you're going to get 76. So the frequency is 76. If you're going to times it by the ray now, 48 times 1.25 you're going to get 60. We don't know what English is, we're going to get to that. Spanish, you're going to do 80 times the rate, you're going to get 100. So that's the angle. So now we've got pretty much everything. Cool, so it looks like they already filled out one part. That's nice. Okay, so let's look at the question. Work out the number of students who answered French. I think we've done that, isn't it? Well, it was 76 according to what we did. Now, B, complete the table and the pie chart. Okay. So let's see what we can do here. So for the table, actually, no, we can work out English because what we know about a pie chart is that all angles in a circle must add up to what? 360 degrees. That's it. So we just got to find a difference. So if you add up these four numbers, we're going to have basically 30 plus 95 plus 60 plus 100. That gives us 285 degrees. Now, if we subtract that against 360, we get 75 degrees. So that's exactly what English represents. And to get a frequency, we're going to go from degrees to frequency, we're going to divide it by the rate. So divide it by 1.25, you get 60 students that did English. Nice. Now we can fill out the pie chart. Let's do it. 
So it's recommended that you guys use um uh a that's it. So let's fill this out, yeah. So you before you do this, make sure you guys have the right tools for this so you can actually draw the angles correctly. It helps a lot. But anyway, to do 60 degrees is quite easy. It's gonna be our right angle from here. So I'm gonna do 60 first. So I'm gonna just estimate guys. In reality, you guys should use the right tools, yeah. So here's 60 degrees. I'll call this one 60. And this is gonna be Arabic. That's quite a good amount. A lot of people are studying Arabic, mashallah. Next one is gonna be French and Italian. Let's have a look. So let's do Italian because only 30 degrees, yeah. So 30 degrees would be oh no, we've done Italian. And we've done French. Let's do English, which is 75 degrees. So 75 degrees would look kind of just I'll say 75 I'm gonna estimate like this. Remember, use a protractor, guys, yeah. 75 degrees. That's going to be over here, and and that's going to be English, and of course 100 degrees, which is the biggest, is going to be Spanish. Ah, nice, not bad. I guess everyone's done choosing the language they like, and that's it. That should kind of be it. Okay, number nine. So in this shop, pens cost 34 cents each. Now, shop has a special offer on pens. So it says that you can get two pens and get one free. So that means basically if you want to get three pens, two pens is 68 cents and you get one free. So three pens basically equals 68 cents. Okay, nice. Now, Morris wants 25 pens. Work out how much Morris has to pay for 25 pens. Okay, a nice trick is to first you ask yourself, how many times does these three pens go into 25 pens, yeah? So we just do 25 divided by 3. And that should give us basically 8 remainder 1 extra pen, yeah? So, or just 8.333 in your calculator. Now, all you want to do is just times 8 by your basically 3 pens and your 68 cents. So, let's do it here. So, for the number of pens we're going to have, if we do 8 times 3, that's basically 24 pens covered. So, we need one more pen. Likewise, for the cost, 8 times 68 cents, that's going to give us 544 cents okay so that's very important to know yeah so that's how much it costs for basically 24 pens but we need 25 pens so let's add one more pen which is 34 cents so the final answer is just going to be basically that add 34 so in your calculator 544 plus uh, 34 like another 34 and that's going to give us exactly 578 cents and that's it guys that's literally um, this question done Alright, number 10 now. So, write these fractions in order size, starting with the smallest. So, every time you get fractions, guys, in all honestly, because you've got a calculator, you can just literally hack this easily. Just put them all in your calculator. So, for example, if I have 3 over eighths and convert to a decimal, we know that this one is 0 0.375. 1 quarter is 0 0.25. 7 twentieths, do the same again, so 7 twentieths, that gives us 0 0.35. And the last one, 5 sixteenths. That's going to be 0 0.3125. Now we just pick, now we just look at the smallest number. So looking at the smallest number, what I usually do, because you've got more post lengths or digits, add zeros to the ones that are short. So look at this one. This has four digits, 3, 1, 2, 5. So add two more zeros for this one, add two more zeros for this one, and add one more zero for that one. Now this looks easier. So you can kind of see that this, the second one is the smallest. It's like, it's like saying 2,500. So one quarter is the smallest cross it out. Next smallest would be the last one, 3, 1, 2, 5, so 5 sixteenths. Next one would be 7 twentieths. So let me just write down, so 7 twentieths. And lastly, 3 eighths. That's, that's just an easy way to do it. Okay, next one. So there are only green beads and red beads in a bag. The ratio of the number of green bees to the number of red bees is 5 to 9. So let's keep that in mind. So altogether, when it comes to like bees, you always add up the number of bees, the number of the ratios. So 5 plus 9 gives us 14. So this means that 5 of the 14 bees are green, whereas 9 are red. So the question is, what fraction of the bees are green? Well, we know not green, 5 are green, so it would be 5 over 14 are green. That's it. Not much to that question. 11. 
The diagram shows a square, ABCD, and a regular pentagon, CDFG. Now, you can see they're kind of stuck together. Work out the size of the angle mark X. Now, what I do, I look at each shape and just try and work out myself. Well, in a square, we should know that in a square, all of these angles are 90 degrees. They're always right angles. So this is 90. Now, to work out the angles in a pentagon, there's a really cool formula to use here. Yeah? It's called the sum of the interior angles. So sum of the interior. Yeah? And the formula is this. It's always the number size, take away 2, and then you times it by 180 degrees. Okay, so let's firstly work on that. This will tell you the sum of all of these angles inside, a, in this case, a pentagon. Because you've got pentagon, is 5 sides, so it'll be 5 take away 2, which is 3. And you times it by 180. And if you do that, you get 540 degrees. So this means that the sum of all these angles inside is 540. Well, because we know it's a 5-sided shape and it's got 5 angles, to get one interior angle, you divide it by 5. So in your calculator, 540 divided by 5 should give us 108 degrees. This means that one angle here is 108, and all of them, of course, are 108, and so on. Now, remember, we're trying to find x here. So to find x, the sum of all of these three must equal 360, because the sum around the angles around a point is 360 degrees. So let's add up these two numbers, guys. So 90 plus 108 gives us 198, and a minus that from 360, if you do that, you get 162. So this means x is 162. Yeah, that's it for that. Now, for number 12, it says this diagram shows a shaded shape on a grid. So it looks like we've got some sort of like kite, yeah? It's that type of kite. You got, it bends at that point. On the grid, reflect the shape in the line x equals 6. So all you got to do, using a ruler, x equals 6 means you, you just mark over here and just draw a straight line. You draw a nice straight line. I'm, I'm just doing it freehand for now, yeah? But you should use a ruler, guys, yeah? And then you just reflect it nicely. All I do is just pick one point, which is here. Pick another point here. So this is obviously how many points away from this this point. It's one, two, three, four across. So if you had four across, it should be on here, on this point here. Likewise, this corner here is about five points away, so it should be here. And then this corner here is about three points away, so it should be here. Now all you do is just kind of visualize the shape. Use a, remember, use a, using a ruler, avoid doing freehand like I'm doing on here. And then just kind of connect it nicely. Oops, that's not going to be nice. I could use a ruler, but it's just um, the tools I've got is not working right now. And that's it, that's reflected. And then we're going to, now it says the diagram below shows triangle P and triangle Q in a grid. Describe fully the single transformation that maps P into Q. That maps P. So it's trying to tell you what is happening here. Well, you have to first understand that this is actually an enlargement, yeah? So Q is basically just scaled up. It just become a bigger version of P. Now, how many times bigger? Well, a nice trick is just to count how many times this length has gone up. Well, if this length is just like one unit up, you can see it's gone up three units. So this shape is three times bigger. So it's an enlargement of three. But the question is, where does it? Where is like the mirror that it reflects, or the point of reflect of, of of enlargement? So what you do now, you draw some dotted lines like here, and you just using a ruler, you just connect, you just draw all the way across here, and you realize that it's gonna cut somewhere around here, and then draw another enlargement. Just try and match every corner. So you're gonna realize that the point of enlargement is at the origin. If I do this corner, and I carried on it's gonna cut over here that's what the ruler will tell me so what this tells me is that we're basically looking at this point over here and this one's been magnified into that so we say that this is an enlargement so we say that this is an enlargement by a scale factor so the word is scale factor of three from point or center you can say oh, oh now 13 so buses leave a bus station to go to hospital every 16 minutes buses leave the same bus station to go to college every 20 minutes so let's just put like a little map here so one every 16 minutes and the other one every 20 minutes yeah okay at 9 a.m. a bus leaves the bus station to go to a hospital 
and at the same time a bus leaves the bus station to go to college so it starts at 9 a.m work out the next time a bus leaves the bus station to go to the hospital and at the same time a bus leaves the bus station to go to college okay so you want to see when, when these two times match up now a nice trick is just look at the numbers for a second yeah so one is 20 minutes and one is 16. 20 is in the, so it always ends with a zero so you just go find out when does 16 if you keep multiplying it does it when's the next end in a zero well if you times it by five you should get that so we can say 16 times 5 gives us 80 so in the 80th minute yeah and of course 20 times 4 will give us the 80th minute as well so you can see after 80 minutes so if we add up 80 minutes at 9 a.m well we know there are 60 minutes in an hour so that means plus another 20 minutes left over so if you add one hour plus 20 minutes it should be 10 20 so that's the time the next leaves 10 20 a.m nice so we're given a set of numbers between 1 all the way to 15. So these are the numbers we're allowed to use inside this entire Venn diagram and inside the box. So these are the numbers we're allowed to use. Now it says that in circle A, they're all even numbers. So this means you're allowed to use 2, 4, 6, all the way up to 14. And B is multiples of 3. So 3 times table, 3, 6 onwards. Now complete the Venn for the sets E, A and B. So let's do it. Let's put all the even numbers first. Actually. Let's put all the numbers that A and B have in common. So before I do this, I like to write them over here. So in A, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. I recommend you guys do that. And for multiples of 3, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. And now before you do anything else, you should find out what they have in common. So what overlaps? They both got 6s. And they both got 12. So 6 and 12 should be in the bang in the center, meaning they overlap in both. Now exclusively in B, you're left with 3, 9, and 15. And exclusively in A, if actually you know if it helps, sometimes it helps with just crossing out the numbers, is these two are gone. We use 6 already and we use 12. We now got 2, 4, 8, 10, and 14. And now Looking at all the numbers that we did not use, so let's just take what we use. We used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and we used 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So now you're left with 1, 5, 7, 11, and 13, and they all go outside. So you put 1, 5, 7, 11, 13. Just make sure all numbers are used, yeah? So you should use all 15 numbers. So we used 1. So I just count them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And yeah, that's it, guys. That's literally how you complete a Venn, diag Venn diagram. Now, 15. So 150 students were each asked to name their favorite sport from hockey, rugby, and football. Cool. The two-way table gives information about the results. So we're looking at year 10, 11 students here. Now, for example, if you look at the total... That means there was 150 together, 39 like hockey, 58 like rugby, and then the remainder would be football. So let's go ahead and do this right now, yeah? Best way to do this, guys, is to firstly just add up these two numbers and take away from 150. So we can say 39 plus 58. That gives us 97. So these two make 97. And then 150 take away 97. So I'll put over here. That gives us a total of 53 like football. Now for the rest, for the hockey, we know altogether 39 like hockey, 27 when you when year 11, meaning the difference is going to be 12 in year 10. For rugby, 58 like rugby, out of those, 42 were from year 10, and the remainder was 16. Let's double check, 42 plus 16 is 58. It's always good to always put this in your calculator, yeah? Next one, for the total... We know that total across is 78, so total in year 10s, there were 78 people in year 10. And if you add up these two numbers, 12 and 42, 12 and 42 gives us 54. Take 54 away from 78, so 78 minus 54, guys. You're left with 24 people in football. Now, same thing down here. We know 53 like football, 24 in year 10, so 53 take away 24. That leaves us with 29. Same for the total. 150 they were all together. Just do 70, do 150 take away 78. 
and I'll give you the last number which is 72 and that's it, it should all check out now for part B they say work out the percentage of the 150 students that are in year 10 so percentage of 150 that are in year 10 so how many are there in year 10 right now? well we know 78 are in year 10 and it's out of 150 all this means you write as a fraction 70 out of 150 and to change the percentage you times it by 100 your answer so in your calculator guys put that down and if you times it by 100 you should get 52 percent and that's it 52 percent are year 10s that means the remainder would be year 11s so that is done let is let's go to number 16 all right du -du -du. okay 16 so a plane flew from Madrid to Dubai. The distance flew was 5,658 kilometers. And this took 8 hours and 12 minutes. All right. Work out the average speed of the plane. Cool. So to find the average speed, it's literally this formula. It's average speed equals distance over time. Always like that. Now, let's see what units they want is. They want in kilometers per hour in your final answer. So we need to change the last one to hours. But there's a nice trick, guys. Yeah, I, I like you guys to try using this. So on the top line, we've got distance, we know it's 5,658. Now because you're using a calculator, you can take advantage of that. For the time, you can literally just write on the bottom fraction, 8 hours and then 12 minutes. How do you change 12 minutes into hours? Well, write as a fraction. We know there's 60 minutes an hour, so it would be 12 over 60. That's it. So your final answer would be 5,658 over this, or 8.2, and that should give us... A 690 kilometers per hour cool and then you write the final answer over here nice and now for number 17 here are the first four terms of arithmetic sequence you've got 85 79 73 67 arithmetic means that it's going up or down by the same number so here clearly it's going down by let's see six so the diff common difference is minus six find an expression in terms of n for the nth term now, to find the nth term, the easiest way to do this is firstly find a common difference, which is minus 6. So we're going to call that minus 6n. That's how it works, yeah? So the difference times n plus, and now we're going to pick the term before the first term. So this is the first term. We want to find the term before it. So if we know it's going down this way by 6, if you add 6, 8, 5, you get 91. So this is what we want. It will be minus 6n plus 91. Sometimes people like to write the other way around, 91 minus 6n. But this is your answer. This is the nth term, the top of the bottom. Now, next one, 18. So the diagram shows the shape A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. And it looks like you've got an X over there as well. But this one they did not write. The area of the shape is 91.8 centimeters. Work out the value of X. So what I like to do, I like to split the shape. So you could either split it vertically or horizontally. I'm just going to split it this way. I'm going to split it horizontally, yeah? So let's update the, the values. So we know that this rectangle has a height of 8 and a width of x. So let's write here. It's always good to redraw 8 and x. Now we have a trapezium here. So it's like that. So I think we're given a trapezium formula, isn't it? A trapezium looks like this, by the way. You have basically two parallel lengths, and that's it. It's a four-sided shape. We know that this length is also x. If the whole thing is 14 and this side is 8, that means the difference between 14 and 8 is 6. So that short length is 6. And we know that this length is 13. Now, we know that the area, if you add both of these, is 91.8. So first things first, what is the area of each shape? So for the area of a rectangle, it's just 8 times x. So we know that the area of this shape is 8x. Now, the area of the trapezium, well, we're given it in the beginning of the, of the formula booklet, but I like to use this formula. Add up the two parallel lengths, so x plus 13, and then divide it by 2, and then times it by your height, which is 6. Okay, that's basically what it's going to be. Well, to simplify this, you can do what's, 6 over 2 is just 3. So all that is just basically 3 times x plus 13. So 3 times x plus 13. And that's just basically 3x plus 39. Now, if we add them up, we know that the total area is 91.8. This means that the area of this plus the area of the rectangle must equal 91.8. So let's write an equation, guys, yeah? Let's write down. So we can say that the area is 3x plus 39 plus the original one at the top, which was 8x, 
and that's supposed to equal 91.8. Now let's tidy this up here. Eight, 3x plus 8x is 11x. And then you write plus 39 equals 91.8. Now let's go ahead and make, let's, let's subtract 39 across. We will make x a subject here. So 91.8 minus 39. That's so easy. That's going to give us 52.8. Then we're left with 11x. And now to get x on its own, just divide 11 across. So your final answer is going to be x equals 52.8 over 11. Put down your calculator. You should get 4.8. And that's your answer for x. x is actually 4.8. Cool. Nice. That's worth 4 marks. I think that should be worth 5 marks, if I'm being honest. But yeah, let's move on to 19. Now, on a farm, there are chickens, ducks, and pigs. The ratio of the number of chickens to the number of ducks is 7 to 2. So let's keep that on here. So this is chickens 7, ducks is 2. Chicken and ducks. The ratio of the number of ducks to the number of pigs is 5 to 9. Okay, so they bring something else. Ducks to pigs. There are 36 pigs on a farm. Work out the number of chickens on a farm. This kind of question has two sets of ratio. We need to basically line them up. So let's do this. Let's line up in order of chickens ducks and then pigs that's what we want to do so we know straight away in the first set we got seven to two and on the second set we got five to nine now easy way to do this is to basically keep multiplying them to the line up to be the same what i usually do because this is two and this is a five i would multiply the top row by five and the bottom row by two let's do that yeah if you multiply this row by 5 and this row by 2 and the right answer below, we should get this. So that set times 5 will give us 35 to 10. And if you multiply the bottom row by 2, you're going to get 10 and 18. Okay, so it looks like we're almost there. So now it's telling us in the question that the number of pigs is 36. So let's add that to the ratio, yeah, on the next line. Okay, so actually, you know, we can probably find all the animals. So pigs is the last number. Now, how do we go from 18 to 36? Well, 36 divided by 18 on the calculator is 2. So they just doubled it. So let's double all the values. So double 35 is 70 and double 10 is 20. That's it. Now we've got all the animals required. So the question is, work out number of chickens on a farm. Well, chickens is the first part. There are 70 chickens on a farm if there are 36 pigs on a farm. So the answer is 70. And you just put it over here, actually. Nice. <clears throat> now, 20. All right, more algebra. So, expand and simplify these brackets. Let's do it. So, 3x times the first bracket minus x times the second bracket. Let's do 3x times the first bracket. So, 3x times 2x is 6x squared plus 3x times 3 is 9x minus. Now, 3x, now x times 3x is 3x squared minus x times 5 is minus 5x. Remember the, the sign, yeah? Now you collect like terms. You got 6x squared minus 3x squared, which is 3x squared. You got 9x, take away 5x is positive 4x. Done. We are done. We expanded and we simplified it. You can expand, you can simplify further if you wanted by taking x into the bracket. They both have x in common, so you have x bracket 3x plus 4. That's another answer. Now, part B. Take T, make T the subject of the formula. Okay. So all you want to do is basically rearrange this. Now, what I like to do, I like to write this side first. So let's write AT minus D first equals P because we want to make T equals the subject. Now, to, now all you want to do is move everything one by one. To move minus D across, you do the opposite, which is plus D. So AT equals P plus D. To move, because A is stuck to T, you've got to divide A across. So T is going to equal P plus T, P plus D over A. And that's your answer. So you just write here, T equals P plus D over A. Nice. Now, given that W to the power 5 times W to the power N over W to the power 3 equals W to the power 10, what kind of value N? All right, I don't know how I said all of that. <laughs> now, you just go use the power rules, yeah? If you're multiplying, you add the powers. If you're dividing, you subtract the powers. So let's do it. On the top line, we've got 5 and n. So it's, it's going to be w to the power of 5 plus n. And, and you're dividing by the bottom, so you minus 3. 
and all that's supposed to equal w to the 10. Now, literally, because you know they're, they're both the same, the left and right hand, hand side, ignore the w. So you just got 5 plus n minus 3 equals 10. Well, 5 take away 3 is 2, so you're left with 2 plus n. So let's just work with the powers. 2 plus n minus must equal 10. That means 2 plus something must be 10, well, n must be 8. That's it. That's that power done. Now, moving on to 21. So Grace has a biased five-sided spinner. So biased means it's not fair, yeah? so it's not actually equal, even though it looks equal. Grace is going to spin the arrow on the spinner once. The table below gives the probabilities that the spinner will land on red or on blue or on green. Okay. But she didn't, yeah, okay, also on orange and pink as well. So property lands on red is 20%, 12% for blue, 8% for green, and so on. Now, let's understand what the rest is. The property that the spinner will land on orange is three times the property that land on pink. So wherever orange is, it's three times bigger than pink. So you can think of orange as three times x and pink being x. Okay, so wherever x is, orange will be three times that value. Work out the property that will land on orange. Now, when it comes to property, you guys, all the properties must always add up to 100% or 1. So let's add up all these values, yeah? So you've got 0 0.20 plus 12 plus 0 0.08. That on the calculator should give us 0 0.4. Plus, and then the orange and green properties, 3x plus x is 4x. And that equals 1 whole. Now all you've got to do is just rearrange it. So it make x subject. So take away 0 0.4, you're left with 4x equals 0 0.6 in the calculator. And on the calculator, x is going to be 0 0.6 divided by 4. Put that in the calculator. You should get 0 0.15. So x is 0 0.15 here. That means for 3x, you times it by 3, you get 0 0.45. And that's it. That should give us our result. And the work at orange, they want orange figure, so 0 0.45. Now, Grace spins the arrow on the spinner 150 times. S work on estimate for the number of times it lands on blue. So you just got to multiply that by the blue probabilities. So 150 times 0 0.12. So just put this in the calculator. And when you do that, 150 times 0 0.12, you should get 18. So there's basically, you're most likely expected to get 18 times landed on blue. That's it. 22 inequalities. Now, Write down the inequality shown on number line. When they shade the area, this means you include the two. If they just did a circle like that, this means that it'll be just less than two. Not, it doesn't also equal it. So this is basically telling us that x is basically less than n including two. Because it, there's an arrow here, it, it doesn't end anyway. So that's it. x is less than equal to. Now, next one. So it says here that 2y is between minus 4 and 6, but it also includes minus 4. Write down all the possible values of y. Well, typically, you should make y the subject, yeah? So let's go ahead and divide 2 across the, across the inequality. If you do that, you get minus 2 less than equal y less than equal 3. Now, this reads as y is between minus 2 and 3 and includes minus 2. So if we, do, if we think in that logic, it would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Nice. And for C, solve this inequality. Now, like the other ones, you should try and make T the subject. So just think of this as an equal sign, yeah? So we're going to now work like that. So you've got 7T minus 3. I'm going to imagine this is an equal sign. 2T plus 31. Let's move the T's on the left-hand side and the numbers on the right. So I'm going to minus 2T across and then add this 3 to the other side. So 7T minus 2T is 5T. And then adding this 3 across, 31 plus 3 is 34. Remember, when you always have to add the t terms and the number terms with it, with each other, not the other ones, yeah? And, and to make t the subject, just divide 5. So t is less than equal 34 over 5. And just put it in the calculator, 34 divided by 5 is just 6.8. So t is less than equal 6.8. That's That should be the answer. So the table shows the population of 5 countries. Okay, so just understand what this means. This is all standard form. 1.4 times 10 to the power 9. 10 to the power 9 is basically 10 is basically a billion. And 10 to the power 6 is a million. This means how many zeros are after the 1? Or after this, after after the first, like how, how many did you expect after the first uh, unit, 1? So 1.4 times 10 to the power 9 is basically 1, 
4000000000. So you can see it reads nine digits. That's basically one billion four hundred million, and so on. Now let's work it out. Let's do the question. Work out the difference between the population of China and the population of Germany. So all you gotta do is put these both in the calculator and then see what it gives you. So in the calculator, you can write it's literally 1.4 times 10 to the power 9. Copy exactly this minus 8.2 times 10 to the power 7. So remember, put this in your calculator, yeah? and in the calculator you should get 131. It, it doesn't always read in standard form. A, and then you should see there should be six zeros. Now all you gotta do is put commas in the right place every, after every three digits on the right. So one, two, three. That basically reads one billion three hundred eighteen million. So similar to the first one we saw there. So in standard form, you just always write the first digit and then put decimals for the rest. So three one eight times ten to the power, and you count how many numbers there were after the first digit. Well, there was exactly three six nine digits. So that's how you do it. Now, given that the population of Fiji is one over k times the population of Sweden, well, Sweden we know right here is 9.9 .9, blah blah and we, and we know what the population of Fiji is 9.1 times 10 to the power 5 work out the value of k well if we, just to make our life easy in algebra terms I'm going to call the population change of Fiji f and Sweden s so the formula is basically f equals uh, 1 over k times s so that's s over k therefore to find k just basically move k to the left and f to the bottom here so k is just going to be population of Sweden over population of Fiji. So put them in a the calculator. So we're just going to do the Sweden population on the top bracket, on the top fraction, over population of Fiji in the bottom fraction. So you're going to write exactly 9.9 .9, the Sweden population over 9.1 times 10 to the power of 5. Do this carefully, guys. Remember, you're putting this all in your scientific calculator. Use the fraction button, it's very important. You can't divide it normally, otherwise, you might make a, an error. I personally wouldn't do that. So when you do that anyway, if you put in a calculator, you should get roughly a k value of, um, let's just write a few decimal places, 10.8791, blah, blah, blah. They say give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. So 10.8 rounded is, is 11. So the scale factor is 11. This means that Sweden is 11 times bigger roughly than Fiji. That's what it means. Okay, number 24. Now, factorize fully this entire expression. Well, to factorize something like this, all you gotta do is deal with it term by term. So number by number, then letter by letter. So let's look at numbers. 25 and 45. What times table can they both literally go up to maximum wise? Well, they're both in a five times table, so take five out. A to the power of four and A to the power of nine. Just pick the minimum power. So they both have at least four powers of A. Next one C's, they both have at least three powers of C, C to the three, and for D. Well, they actually one does one's a D and one's a H, so that doesn't work. So we just leave it like that. Now we just open the bracket nicely, and then we just fill in what's missing. So for the first term, to get 25, well, we just times it by 5. We divided 5 out. A to the power of 4, we, we got rid of. C to the power of 7, well, we, we left with 4 powers of C, and we still left a power D for the first one. For the second term, for 45, you know, 5 times 9 gives us 45. We took out four powers of A, so we're left with five powers of A. We took out three powers of C, so that vanishes, and then there's a H. And that's it, and all of this, of course, this entire expression should have been over there, but that's a bit small to write there. Now, part B, solve 2x plus 5 squared, which equals 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 1. You basically just have to expand both sides. When you've got a square bracket, it just means there's two of these brackets. So what we're doing, we're just basically doing 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5 equals 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 1 and then we multiply so when you use the quadratic when you expand the brackets you just got to do it in a certain way we use the we use some kind of bucket method so we do 2x times 2x and then 2x times 5 and then 5 times 2x and then 5 times 5 same for the right you do 2x times 2x 2x times minus 1 and then 3 times that and 3 times minus 1 let's do it all step by step so on the left side, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 5 is plus 10x. Next one, 5 times another 2x is another 10x. And then 5 times 5 is 25. 
now equals, and then do the same for the right hand side. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then 2x times minus 1 is minus 2x. 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Now, just line up your equal sign, yeah? So what we can do, tidy up both sides. So tidy up the left hand side. So you've got 4x squared. You've got, two, you've got 10x plus 10x, which is 20x. And then you left with 25. Same for the right side. You've got 4x squared. Minus 2x plus 6x is plus 4x minus 3. And now all you want to do is literally um, move everything to one side. So let's subtract the right hand side to the left, yeah? So, or let's do let's do the left take with the right. So you got 4x squared, take away 4x squared, which is nothing, that cancels out. You got 20x take away 4x, which is 16x. And you got 25 plus 3, which is plus 28. Equals 0. Now to find x, you make x a subject, yeah? So almost done. So we're going to minus 28 across and divide 16. So x is going to be minus 28 divided by 16. And that, and this is it, guys. That should give us our final answer. Put this in the calculator. You should get exactly x equals minus 1.75. Whew, that's it. Man, that was a, that was a long one. Oh, damn. Hope you guys found that one okay. I think we've got one more to go. So Jethro has sat five tests. Each test was marked out of 100, and the mean mark for the five tests is 74. Okay, let's keep this in mind, yeah? So mean mark is 74. Now, he has to sit one more test, and that's also out of 100. He wants his mean mark for all six tests to be at least 77. Work out the least mark that Jethro needs to get for the last test. Now, here's the easy way to do this, guys, when it comes to mean. They always seem to, like, drop this. So let's firstly work at the five tests, yeah? So for the five tests, if, if each of the mean mark was 74, if the average was 74, that means the total would be the average times how many tests you did. So it would be 74 times 5, yeah? So you could say that the total for the five tests was 74 times 5, okay? Because we don't know what the average, what exactly what all the values were, but if on average everything 74, just multiply by 5 and you get 370. That's the first one. Now, he tells us that he wants his mean mark for all six tests to be 77. So let's work with six tests. We know the total is 370. He just needs one more test. Let's call it x. It's going to have to equal something to be to give you a mean of 77. Well, let's do the same trick. If he wants at least 77, so in fact, I'm going to change the sign to at least here. Yeah? It needs to be 77 times 6. Okay, so he needs at least. 77 times 6. Well, 77 times 6, let's work it out. That's going to give us um, 462. So it's going to be 370 plus x, greater or equal than 462 marks. So he needs 462 marks total. So to get x, subtract 370 across. If you do that, then he needs at least on the last test to, be, to get a mark of 92 or more. So he needs between 92 and 100 to get at least 77. And that's it, guys. That is the least mark he needs, which is 92 marks. And that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. You know, if you guys really enjoyed it, you know, please give me a like, share, subscribe. And, you know, other than that, guys, I'll keep producing more videos every time. If you guys want specific videos or specific papers, you have to message me in the comments. And that way I can actually look at them, read them, and then definitely upload it. But, yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll see you all next time.